In Lesson 12, the students learned about GCF, Greatest Common Factor. And I taught the students, or I reviewed with them, two ways to identify the greatest common factor of two or more numbers. The first method is called the list method. You make a list of all of the factors that belong to the number. And when we're dealing with factors, factors are numbers that fit evenly into another number or can be multiplied by another number to get the product. So I always have the students start with number 1, and I have them make a rainbow. 1 times 15 gives you a product of 15. Then I go to the next number in my list, which would be 2. 2 times nothing gives you 15. Okay, so I'm going to skip to 3, because I know 3 times 5 gives me a product of 15. I go to 4. 4 is not in my list. 4 won't go into 15. Then I go to 5, and 5 is already in my list, so I now I found all of the factors of 15, and they are 1, 3, 5, and 15. So now I do the same thing with 20. 1 times 20 gives you 20. Then I go to number 2. 2 times 10 gives you 20. Then I go to 3. 3 is not a factor of 20. Then I go to 4. 4 times 5 is a factor of 20. And then I go to 5, and 5 is already in my list, so I know I found all the factors of 20. The common factors of 15 and 20 are 1 and 5, making the GCF of 15 and 20 5. Okay? I don't love the list method because inevitably students forget to write something in their list. They forget a factor, and then inevitably the GCF is incorrect. So over the years, I have changed my mind about what I love to find the GCF, and I love the ladder method. You take the numbers 15 and 20, and you put them in an upside division bar. You look to see what the highest number is that goes into both 15 and 20, and I know that's 5. 5 fits into 15 3 times, and 5 fits into 24 times. I look to see if I can divide 3 and 4 by any other common factor, and I can't, so I know that I'm done, and the GCF is 5. Just a little quicker and easier method, and I'm going to show you the video with, with the rest of the problems today with the ladder method. So I'm going to take the numbers 16 and 24, and I'm going to think what, the number, what number goes into both of those numbers evenly. I'm going to start small. I know 2 goes into them because they are both even numbers. 2 goes into 16 8 times, 2 goes into 24 12 times. I know 8 and 12 are both, again, divisible by 2. 4 and 6, again, both divisible by 2. And at the end of my ladder, 2 and 3, they cannot be divided by anything anymore, uh, any number greater than 1. So now this problem is a little different than the one I just did because the one I just did had one number on the side for the greatest common factor. And here I have three numbers. When you have more than one number on the side of your ladder, I tell the students this kind of looks like an F. And you take all of the numbers on the side and you multiply them. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So the greatest common factor of 16 and 24 is 8. And students might run into instances where they have three numbers and they have to find the greatest common factor, the largest number that goes into all three of them. In this case, all three of my numbers are even. So the greatest common factor, or the only number that goes into all three of those numbers, is 2. And students are going to be working on this skill, but also applying it to word problems as well. So I wrote a word problem. Kimberly, sorry if it's cut off right there, has 24 lollipops and 36 pieces of bubble gum. She wants to put into her birthday goodie bags. If she wants to put the same number of lollipops and the same number of bubble gum pieces into each bag, what is the greatest number of bags that she can make? Well, this word right here, huge hint, greatest common factor. So I'm going to look at 24 and 36. I know that 6 fits into both of these numbers. 6 goes into 24 4 times. 6 goes into 36 6 times. And I look at my bottom two numbers, 4 and 6. 4 and 6 are both divisible by 2. 
resulting in a two and three ladder at the bottom here. And two and three um, cannot do not have any greatest uh, have any more common factors other than one, so I know I can stop. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the stuff on the side. Six times two. Okay, is going to give me twelve. Kimberly can make twelve goodie bags if she wants to put the same number of lollipops and the same number of bubblegum pieces into each of the bags. So then this bottom follow-up question is a great one. How many lollipops will go in each bag? How many pieces of bubblegum will go in each bag? Well, that's when you take a look at the top of your ladder. Um, 24 was lollipops. 36 was bubblegum pieces. There's two ways you can do this. If you have 24 lollipops divided by 12 goodie bags, there are going to be two lollipops per bag. And if you take 36 and divide it by 12 goodie bags, there are going to be three bubblegum pieces in every bag. Well, the cool thing about this ladder is that all the work was really already done for you. If you take out the GCF at the bottom of your ladder, you will see, if you label these, two lollipops would fit in each bag and three bubblegum pieces would fit in each bag. So this is a brief overview of today's uh, lesson, Lesson 12, GCF.